Imagine if you can get the gatekeeper on your side. I mean, think about this. Imagine if the gatekeeper is so invested in helping you to succeed that they're willing to put their reputation on a line to connect you with that ideal customer profile, that decision maker. Wouldn't that be exciting? But how do you go about doing that? As you know, in this series, we've been focusing on helping you to navigate the gatekeeper. My guest today is going to give you a strategy that you probably hasn't you probably haven't thought about too much before. Maybe you have, but maybe you didn't execute it well. Don't worry. He's going to give you the literal blueprint of what you should be doing to make that happen. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. My name is Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we're going to talk about navigating the gatekeeper. Specifically, we're going to talk about how you can help the gatekeeper become an advocate for you. These people that are going to be rooting for you to succeed. How do you make that happen? And there's a strategy that you can go about to do that and it's with the proper research. Now, I won't give you all of the details on that. My friend today, Daniel, he works with a company that does an amazing job at this. So he's able to give you, he's breaking everything down, some of the things that they do internally, how he, one of his team members was able to utilize this strategy and how they saw success. But if you think about the old school way of just being mean and ridiculing and blah, 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 ain't this ain't that, it ain't that. It ain't that. If you're looking for that, this is not that episode. We're gonna teach you how you can be a respect, respectable adult and to be respectful to the gatekeeper and how you can help this person and how they can help you. It's fun. Let's listen to it. But there are ways to get to the gatekeeper. And so I would like to start this um, line with the saying, don't bro me until you know me. Meaning that you have (laughs) no business talking about someone else in the company until you know the business. You have no business trying to step into their company if you don't know what you could even do for them. So that's the saying there, and that's going to be the premise of this entire conversation right here. So you know that knowing a person, let alone a business, takes time. This puts a pressure and challenge to SDRs of many organizations out there to really get to know them better and find specific data about them. And the solution that I want to talk to you about today is not necessarily about Task Drive. I don't want to sell anything, but yeah. simply the fact that we want to establish a premise of how do we get to know our people and our prospects better. Number one, there's a difference between knowing a person and knowing an organization. Talking to a gatekeeper, say for example, I talk to one of your staff, Donald, and I say some very personal things about you, some of your achievements, Is that really going to help me get through to her to you? Not necessarily, perhaps. She could say, okay, that's good. You better tell Donald that, not me, though. So good luck trying to find him. (laughs) You know, I'm not not thinking that your assistant is that way, but it could probably be that. And that's my experience with my SDR here in Task Drive, you know. Um, She tried to get personal on a personal level with the decision maker by talking to the gatekeeper about a personal level conversation with a gatekeeper. It's no use. Whatever you say about the decision maker is not going to affect your gatekeeper because that's too personal. Meaning that if your gatekeeper goes to the decision maker saying, hey, I just spoke to someone and spoke to this about you, she's, she, she either could, he or she could either get one or two responses. I was like, great. I was like, or no. He's like, that's, that person's a stalker. Like, don't even, don't even <laughs> think about it, you know. It could be that. It could be that. So let's try to switch this up. Instead of talking something personal about the person, what I've learned from many sales podcasts before and many sales webinars is the fact that maybe it's time that we start talking about the account itself and not just the person itself. Meaning that sometimes people will feel too compelled and pressured if we start talking about their personal achievements. So instead of talking about that, because when you start talking about personal achievements and milestones and something very personal about the person, they feel pressured because you're now stepping into their personal zone. So we switched this up a bit, and based on the learnings that we've had from previous sales webinars and you know many great salespeople out there who are just listening right now as well, try talking about the account. Why don't we talk about the whole company itself? And see yeah. what it can make, a di- what difference it can make. Yeah. 
question that I could find mm -hmm. out there. What is it that I need to be able to access that's going to help me to be able to have that type of dialogue? That's a very good question. And here's where it becomes really specific and, um, you know, something that I encourage um, many organizations and companies to do. Number one is that more often than not, the SDRs are assigned to find this task, you know, this, this specific information. They're, they're assigned this task to find that specific information. And so when you're doing your cold calling from a CRM or from somewhere from a dialer or, you know, you're picking up literally a cell phone on your hand and you're trying to navigate a computer, scrambling to find this information, it takes time. Yeah. It takes and choose up a significant amount of your time having to find that information let alone, you know, finding the right information as you try to dial. So if you're trying to dial and you're trying to find that information, if you're good at it, then good. But more often than not, sometimes it's hard to find that information. This is where my advocacy and why I'm here in Phoenix right now, you know, I'm spreading this mentorship and information to them that if you have a resource that can find this information for you consistently and constantly day by day, then your SDR can simply rely on one thing that this resource can give. That is, this resource could produce this specific account-based insider information, put that on a sheet, export that as a CSV file, upload this to your CRM, so when your SDR starts dialing or calling their prospects, they could see that information right there on the screen. And so if you can get a resource who could do the research, get the contacts, get the information you need and just does this constantly, then your SDRs will be equipped with the right information to spur up the conversation. And there are several ways to do this. You could get someone from an outsourced provider. You can get someone inside your company. You can get someone who's a freelancer. Really depends on what you need. Depends on your situation. For instance, how? what are some information you can generally look for on a bank that can you know that can help you because yeah mm -hmm. I'm talking to them good question so say for example we're gonna talk about um, task drives personal ICP sure. and we're calling a bank say for example a business bank because our fit is more business to business if we're calling a business bank uh, if we're calling a business to business bank we look at certain things number one we look at the growth of their sales team have they had recent growth in their sales team? Number two, we could also look at recent acquisitions that they may had. Number three, we look at recent um, mergers or any recent funding that they recently received. By getting these pieces of information, then we can spur up a conversation with them. Say, for example, I would say, hey, ABC Bank, just wanted to reach out to you quickly because I noticed here that you had a 30% growth in your sales team in the past six months. There must be many exciting things happening in your organization right now, and I'm just reaching out to see how we could support you and you know, in that endeavor, how we could support you in reaching your goals with that significant growth that you've just had with your sales team. Are you interested in learning more? Simply that, we use that account-based insight, from the word insight, that intelligence, to make a conversation with them. It's not about task drive, it's about them. So again, don't bro me until you know me. If I simply say, hey, I'm calling you because I wanted, I wanted to check out how we could support your sales team, their answer is going to be, so what? What do you know about us? But by simply because I justify that, hey, you've recently had growth in your sales team, so there must be something that is going on that you want to achieve this year. That's where you spur up the conversation. Love it, man. And if folks want to get in touch with you, get access to that, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, so they could go over to TaskDrive.com, which is our website, and there is a consultation there. They could also go to LinkedIn and find me. My name is Daniel Alexander Viduya in LinkedIn. I'm the one who is with a Task Drive background and funny buttons <laughs> behind me. Um, and it's a, it's a profile in Mexico. Um, if anyone, if I am in the area where the person is in, I'm normally happy to do a meetup. I'm fully vaccinated, J and J, strong stuff, but <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed it. So currently, I'm in um, in the Phoenix area, and I will be here for a few weeks more. Listen, that was Daniel, and if you want to go ahead and connect with Daniel and find out some of the great things that he's doing in his organization, you can find the links down below if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of the directories. If you're watching this on YouTube and you have the pleasure of seeing my beautiful face, I want you to scroll down. You can go ahead and click in the comment area. You'll see the link. But this episode is really powerful. It's There's some things here that's actionable for you to take and apply. You heard stories. 
it's critical though that you just don't let it sit as another episode that you just listen to, that you actually take these things and implement them. And I want you to see success. I want you to be able to thrive. If you're, if you're needing some help and you want to get some more ideas, go back to our Facebook group or our LinkedIn group and share some of your insights from this episode or talk about how you want to be able to implement this or connect with some of the other members and myself there. We can give you some ideas how you can implement this better. I want you to succeed. I want you to thrive. I want you to be able to go out and find those ideal customers. Mm-hmm. You heard some tips today on doing that. I want you to be able to know what to say to be able to build value with them. He gave you some ideas on that. I want you to be able to know how to close some deals. But most importantly, I want you to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.